What is going on, Badger family? Welcome to Locked on Badgers, your team every day. Um, we continue just talking about the seismic, incredible difference in the landscape with Luke Fickle coming into Wisconsin. I've got four rants I want to talk about, things that I think aren't being talked about enough or are being completely overblown. That's coming up on this Locked on Badgers. Let's go. You are Locked on Badgers, your daily podcast on the Wisconsin Badgers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's going on, everybody? Welcome to Locked On Badgers. I'm your host, Ryan Herrings, your team every single day. Uh, today's show is brought to you by Omaha Steaks. Quality steaks, burgers, chicken, seafood, and more delivered right to your door. Uh, stock up on the flavor and value with tender steaks, juicy burgers, and more from Omaha Steaks. Naturally extra age, free shipping, flash frozen, contactless delivery. And let's get into it. So I've got a couple of rant. Rants is maybe the wrong word, but a couple of things that I think are being overblown or maybe not talked about enough. And I'm just going to get into it. These, this is my opinions. Obviously, y'all know this. If you listen to the show, you disagree. Chime in on the comments. Let me know. And I'll put those comments up and we'll have the discussion. As long as it's respectful, I'm all about dis discussing where we disagree because I think we get smarter when we do that. We we need to have disagreements to, to kind of sharpen our viewpoints and, and to think um, – a little differently about how we're looking at something. It's good for the perspective. So if you disagree with me on these, let me know. Put it in the chat. Uh, put it in the comments. Here's my first one. I've seen a lot of people say uh, they, they arrived at the right spot, but Chris McIntosh really bumbled this, you know, or, or this wasn't handled very well. Here's my first rant. Chris McIntosh nailed this. I'm, I'm sorry. Like I've said a lot about how much I think Jim Leonard means to this program, how much he means to me as a Wisconsin fan. So I'm not going to go that road again. I think I've said that, and I think a lot of people have said that. But at the end of the day, if you look at a big picture, in the span of a football calendar year, right, from when the season started to when the season ended, Paul Chris, or I'm um, sorry, Chris McIntosh replaced Paul Chris with Luke Fickle. Like, just, he, he nailed this. And there were a lot of people pressuring him, take the interim tag off, just give it to Jim Leonard. Why are you waiting for, you're, you're, all you're doing is damaging the program. And again, I'm not, listen, not taking victory lap, but I was very clear, like, no, just wait. There's not a rush here. See who you might be able to get. And he nailed it. Okay, Chris McIntosh hit a home run. This is the best hire you could have possibly brought in. He has playoff pedigree. He's run a program. He's still young. He is a great recruiter. He develops players. By the way, he's a, he knows the Big Ten. He believes in the offensive line. Like, this is a home run. Chris McIntosh nailed it. No, he did not fumble this. No, he did not, in my opinion, jerk anybody around. He never promised the job to Jim Leonard, right? And I think Jim Leonard would have gotten the job if if Luke Fickle couldn't have been brought on board. I don't think there was like a false thing where he was leading Jim Leonard on. I think Jim Leonard was very much a candidate. And then when Chris McIntosh, who inarguably has a better resume, and that's not Jim Leonard's fault. Jim Leonard hasn't had that opportunity, but he inarguably has a better resume. When he comes on board, you got to hire him. You have to. So my opinion, Chris McIntosh nailed this. All right, next rant. And on this one, again, I just put a little in front of these. I was right. Uh, again, not trying to take victory laps on anything because I get plenty wrong. Um, there was a time I really thought Austin Confensis was the future of this program. So I get plenty wrong, but I have said so many times I've lost count of it. Wisconsin's a big boy program. They need to act like it. And I've had a lot of people push back and say, who could they actually get? Or Wisconsin's not that great of a program. It's a middle tier Big Ten program. It's not a blue blood. You got to take Jim Leonard because you're not going to get a better guy than him. And I've said continually, continuously, Wisconsin is an upper tier Big Ten program. And the Big Ten and SEC are the powerhouses of this sport. So I thought Wisconsin was a big, big fish in the pond. Okay, it's not the apex predator in the college football ecosystem. It's not a, a killer killer whale, but it's like a barracuda. Like it's it's a pretty darn good one. There's it's way more of a have than a have not. And this hire, okay, this should fire you up, Badger fans, more than anything else that's happened. This should fire you up. Luke Fickle just validated the fact that Wisconsin's a big time program with big time potential. Okay, because he could have gone a lot of places. And he could have put his name into a lot of places and probably been one of the lead candidates. And he took Wisconsin. He said, Wisconsin is where I want to make my big move. This is his big move. He's been at Cincinnati, call it whatever you want, biding his time for a while, right? He's been there turning down interest from Power 5 programs, from, from Big 10 programs, from Big 12 programs. 
Um, he's been kind of just staying away from that because he's been good. This is his power play. And there's people talk, we're gonna talk about Ohio State coming up. There's there's no guarantee he can go to Ohio State when that job opens up. Like this is his power play. And for him to to come to Wisconsin and say, that's the school that I want to push my chips into. I'm telling y'all, that's validation from what we've been saying on this show that Wisconsin is is one of the halves of college football. And it's time we start acting like it. And bringing in a coach like this validates that. So, I yeah, it's a big time job. And I'm stoked for it. And I'm stoked that Luke Fickle's coming on board for it. Now, right, here's my next one. You ready for this one? Players have the right to vent. Okay, so I, listen, I'm not trying to tell anybody how to think or how to react to anything. All right, that's not my place. Um, and it shouldn't be my place. But I'm seeing more pushback to players venting on social media from people that I, here's the thing. First of all, everyone reacts differently. Okay. I react differently to things than, than Justin does, than Scott does, than, than Rajiv does, than my wife does. Everybody reacts differently to things. And players are, are younger. When you're younger, you just inherently react with a little more emotion. There's nothing wrong with that. And those players have been in the foxhole with Jimmy. Right. Remember this, like we're on the outside and we, we can probably we can definitely look at this a little more an analytically with a, a little less emotion because we're not in the locker room. We're not at every practice. We're not seeing what Jimmy's doing behind the scenes. And those players knew Jimmy wanted this job. Right. And he certainly is qualified. And he, Jimmy has wanted the job. He's talked about it. So I think it's been a rallying cry inside that locker room. And um, so. When you see players come on social media and vent about it, former alumni who, who have known Jimmy for a long time, vent about it, they have that right. They should. You know, I get it. I get it. I get it from their perspective. Like, they thought it was going to be Jimmy. They believe in him. They've, they've worked with him. I get it from their perspective. So, listen, I, I have no issue with it. Um, if if you do have an issue with it, if you think they shouldn't have a voice or – I don't know, I just disagree. Yeah. Again, let me know, like – I think they have the right to having worked with them. And, and like I said, been in that locker room, been in that foxhole, uh, be upset. I think a lot of it is, is raw. It just happened, right? This, I think the, the seas will calm down a little bit. I think fickle will do that. But as of right now, yeah, it doesn't bother me. Players going to social media to vent. I think that is kind of the world we live in today. That's how a lot of younger people communicate anyway, whether they're venting, whether they're happy, whether they're just binge watching something, it's a, it's a social media thing. So I'm okay with it. No issues with it. And I, I think the people that have an issue with it maybe are, are overanalyzing a little bit. So that's my third one. Uh, my fourth big one. And this is the one that, that maybe drives me the most nuts that I can just can see. I see continually popping up on people's feeds on timelines as talking points as like this, this, uh, I don't want to say anxiety point, but the Ohio state thing, you know, is, is this a stepping stone job for Luke fickle? to go to Ohio state. What I would say is who cares? Uh, like I just got done talking about Wisconsin being one of the big boys of college football. They are, they're still not Ohio state. Like, yes, if, if Luke fickle eventually wants to use this as a stepping stone for Ohio state, I can't blame him. Right. Sean, we, we talk about Sean Lewis, the, the offensive coordinator at Kent, or the head coach at Kent state potentially coming to Wisconsin, right? Cause he's a former Wisconsin guy. Do we care that we're using Kent state as a potential stepping stone to Wisconsin? No, that's how college football, the food chain works. OK, like nobody I don't, who cares if this is a stepping stone job and in several years he leaves. And again, this is only my opinion. Um, let me know in the comment if I'm wrong. But here's what I would say. You want coaches that other schools want to poach. That means you have good ones. Right. Like the only way Ohio State really comes after him and wants to poach him is if he elevates Wisconsin over the course of several years, in which case it's a good hire. Right. In which case it worked out and Wisconsin's better. Ohio State's not coming for him if he he tanks, right? So if we're if we ever get to the point, whether it's a couple of years from now, five years from now, whatever, where Ohio State is like, yeah, we have to go get Fickle. Well, that means Wisconsin's good, right? And you want people who are talented enough that other schools are envious of them, right? You want people who um have the the potential and the the talent and the track record that big time schools and big time organizations are coming after them. That means you made a good hire. That means you put someone in that position that's doing a great job. And, you know, I had this comment on one of our YouTube channels from angry otter fishing 614. That's way too long of a name, bro. But he says, as an Ohio state fan, I'm pretty jealous of this hire. He's going to open up uh, Ohio recruiting for you guys. 
Yeah, like it's a really good hire. And when has Ohio State ever been jealous of, jealous of us for anything? Like it's a good hire. And I wouldn't stress if it's a stepping stone job for him. Like I really wouldn't stress it because if it does, that means he did well here. And then the next hire, you can go out and find someone else because the job is going to be very marketable. So, yeah, that's that's where I'd say with that. Those are my rants. Um, to round it up, the players have the right to vent. I wouldn't stress it. They've been in the locker room. It's been a long season. Um, I don't care if it's a stepping stone job for him because if he ends up stepping that stone, that means Wisconsin has, has done really well for themselves in, in the interim. Um, what were my other ones? Oh, yeah. I think McIntosh nailed this. I think he absolutely crushed it. I mean, we went from Paul Chris to Luke Fickle in the span of a football season. And then, once again, this program is a big-time job, and this move validates it. All right, coming up, we're going to talk a little bit about something Jim Leonard said that actually rings really true about this program and why Luke Fickle can be the guy to help fix that. Uh, but first, today's show is brought to you by our good friends over at Omaha Steaks. Um, Omaha Steaks is just your number one source, not just for, obviously, steaks, meat, burgers, uh, kielbasa, sausage, right? All that great stuff, but also desserts, wine, potatoes, gift boxes, Listen, tis the season to be giving. And if you want to be moving up on some of your friends' power rankings, right? You want to become the best friend to several different people, you get them an Omaha Steaks gift basket. Okay. You get the uh, gourmet gift basket coming with two five ounce filet mignons, sirloins, chops, burgers, kielbasa. Y'all know I love kielbasa, potato seasoning, and dessert. Are you kidding me? That is the ultimate Christmas present. And if any of y'all want to, you can send that my way and I will be forever grateful this holiday season. So go check out Omaha Steaks. Go to the website. Great deals running right now with um, Black Friday, Cyber Monday, contactless delivery, all of that on Omaha Steaks. All right, let's keep going. Uh, when you're done here, go check out Locked On Sports today. All of the biggest sports news of the day in one spot, like only the Locked On Network can do it. Whether you're listening on podcasts, YouTube, or the Odyssey app, that's Locked On Sports today. Go check them out. And let's just keep going. Let's talk about it. So I mentioned one of the things that um, Jim Leonard had talked about that Luke Fickle I actually think might be the perfect guy to fix. It's kind of a weird uh, segue there. Is Jim Leonard talked about the little things at the program, uh, player development. We have to fine tune, you know, these things that we've let slip a little bit. And I think insinuated in that it was recruiting, player development, NIL, a lot of these little things that it, we all saw slip a little bit, right? Um, Justin talked about on the last podcast. You're not pushing people around anymore. You know, we didn't have a recruiting department for a while. We were certainly on the collective side, the NIL side excuse me, one of the later programs to get up and running. And I still don't think we're running with the efficiency or the magnitude of schools like Nebraska and Iowa and Minnesota. You know, we talked about how many collectives those schools have already set up. So I think Fickle is the guy, right, to come in and fix a lot of that. And the reason I say that is one of the, the first things that was leaked and one of the first things we talked about was he's bringing his strength and conditioning guy over. And that guy's apparently a legend. He's bringing over his um, director of recruiting and his director of recruiting strategy. And we talked to Alex from Lockdown Bearcats uh, on the live show the other day. And the importance of those players, you could tell from his perspective, from a Bearcats perspective, oh, not those players, those, those personnel cannot be overstated. Like Luke Fickle, just for whatever reason, he he got into how important a recruiting department is way before a lot of other people. Like he built up a recruiting department with people who, you know, have been in that area and have been recruiters for a long time. He didn't take just random pieces and shuffle them in there like we kind of have at Wisconsin. Like it was a purpose built group of people designated as you guys need to go find the talent, connect with them, liaison with the coaches, develop a strategy. And you know, one of the articles I saw with their um, Cincinnati's recruiting department, they talked specifically about their strategy, how they have a scout that looks at five to 7,000 players. And then he filters it up to the next person of the people he likes to his recruiting um, director of recruiting strategy. And that guy determines how much contact does this recruit get? Who do I connect them with coaches? The article is really impressive in the depth and the detail of how they approach, approach recruiting, right? They talked about how they discovered Sauce Gardner, like how they picked him out of a camp because he plays a certain way and he, he fit these intangibles and these traits that they saw that they want embodied in their program, all right? It it speaks very much of a culture fit of how they look, like, much like Wisconsin, by the way, how they find players in camp. Cincinnati has that type of approach, but they have a more robust, built-out recruiting department to do it. They have a more experienced recruiting department to do it. And now he's going to come into the Big Ten, and he's going to come into a school that, quite frankly, if they want to, have they can put way more resources into this. So you're, you're bringing in a guy who's been doing more with less, and now potentially we're giving him more. 
can he do more with more, right? That's what's so exciting about this because we talked about it on the other show. And this is again, where Badger fans, if you want to, if you want to get hyped, if you want to get a little excited, I don't think Luke Fickle's coming here. If Chris McIntosh told him now you can't have much of a recruiting department, right? Like, I think he's coming here under with the understanding that he's going to be able to build out his recruiting department and do what he wants with it. Now, everything's within reason. You know, Chris McIntosh has talked about that. Paul Chris in the past talked about that. But I'm, there's just no way Luke Fickle is giving up the job security he had, right, the ability to pick wherever he wants to go, essentially, on the open market, to come to Wisconsin if he isn't being told that, yeah, we're going to pour money into the recruiting department. Like, this is not going to be an issue for you. And you can really dream on what can Luke Fickle do at Wisconsin, right? Because he is, he at his heart, he's a great recruiter and he has built a recruiting staff that has really outperformed what Cincinnati should be doing. Now, what can he do in a Big Ten, right? What can he do at this stage? And that should be exciting to people. He's going to open up Ohio. There's a ton of talent in Ohio. And yes, Ohio State is going to get the cream of that crop every year, 100%. But there are a lot of high three and four and low four star players that don't go to Ohio State. Like those those players could start to be a pipeline to Wisconsin, right? He's he's absolutely another question we had is, and this segment's mostly about recruiting. Another uh, question we had is, well, what about the in state recruiting? Are there a lot of bridges burned? He, Luke, listen, I don't know Luke Fickle. Obviously, I know he's not an idiot. Okay, he's not going to come into Wisconsin and not emphasize in state recruiting. And I don't, for the love of me, think that um, in-state coaches are going to hold some big grudge against the University of Wisconsin for the most part and not try to avoid sending kids there because they didn't hire Jim Leonard. I've seen that narrative um, or the narrative that in-state coaches are, are, are going to need to be won back over. It's still the in-state program. It's still Wisconsin, right? Barry Alvarez is still there. Chris McIntosh played at Wisconsin. We're all, my point is everybody wants the same thing, which is a successful Wisconsin program, Okay. And I don't think in-state kid recruits and coaches and high school coaches, once they get to meet Coach Fleck, based on everything we've heard about him, are going to be reticent to send players to play at the University of Wisconsin for him, right? And I don't think in-state players who want to play close to home, again, talking about Jim Leonard, a guy who played before they were born, are going to be like, ah, they did Jim Leonard dirty. I'm going to go to Illinois now. I just, I think that's a narrative that's been built up falsely. I think in-state recruiting is going to get better or, or at least hold serve. I mean, remember, quite frankly, the last last year wasn't that great anyway. You had multiple top prospects leave the state. So let's not act like this wall has been impermeable the last couple of years. Like it is it there's been some holes punched in it. I think Fickle's gonna come in and and do really well on that avenue as well. I talked about it on one of the live shows. I forget which one we had so many, but his his recruiting department talking about the importance of in-state recruiting in Ohio basically said we're gonna know every kid in our backyard that was a quote we're we're gonna know every kid in our backyard and if we don't we're gonna correct that immediately they're gonna they're gonna get after it in state i have zero doubts on that because it would be silly not to and i don't i don't i just can't see him overlooking that that source of talent um and that's so that's why i'm excited there i really think you're gonna see an, an increased emphasis on recruiting i think you're gonna see better recruiting I think you're going to see classes jump back up to where Chris had them trending for a few years, like back into the top 20, certainly the top 25. And I'm excited to see that. I'm excited to see where they go. And you may see more of an emphasis on the transfer portal as well, especially in the first couple of years. So I'm excited for that. Coming up, I have a bunch of comments I want to react to as well. So including why he won't work, why why this is a bad decision. A um, bunch of comments coming up that we're going to react to uh, all from the YouTube show. Stick around for that on Locked on Badgers. What's going on, everybody? Welcome to Lockdown Badgers. As always, I really do appreciate you tuning in. Um, let me know in the comments below if you if you just what you're thinking. Where are you at? Are we still on board with this? All right, let's get some comments up here. There's a lot of things I want to react to. I'm not going to be able to get to all of them, uh, but I really do appreciate everybody tuning in. Everybody listening to the show as we just continue to cover this crazy uh, couple days in Badger football. All right, let's get it. These are all from the YouTube channel. And again, I appreciate everybody who makes comments. I read everything. I try to respond to a lot of them. I try to get some up on the show just that, so we can continue building that community, continue talking back and forth. We're all smarter when we engage more. All right. Uh, James Riggio, Riggio. Sorry if I mispronounced last names, by the way. With regards to existing players, how many will hit the transfer portal? I think that's a fascinating question. I have no idea. I mean, I, again, I told you I'll never blow smoke with y'all. Like sometimes I, I get some inside stuff sent my way by people. On this one, I I have no idea. I don't even know if you asked 
players in the locker room if they would really know because this has happened so quickly. Luke Fickle was just in town um, yesterday. I'm recording this on the 28th. He had they had a team meeting. He has his press conference today. I think. Listen, there's going to be more. So let me let me put it this way: every year players transfer anyway, right? Whether there's coaching turnover or not. So understand that as a baseline. Every year you're losing four, five, six players, no matter what, right? So there's players that would have left anyway. I would say 10 to 15 is probably a pretty safe number. You're going to lose more because of this this um, cycle because of this coaching turnover. But I also think from everything we've heard from Luke Fickle, like he's going to calm those waters pretty quickly. And a lot of people will probably start to buy into that vision. So I would say 10 to 15, I, I can almost, I'd be stunned if a couple didn't enter the portal that, that hurt, right? I, I imagine you're going to lose a couple of players that it's going to sting, right? Good, really good recruiting wins. Talented players are going to go elsewhere. Um, that, that's just part of a transition, right? Change is change for a reason. Change is not continuity. So you're going to lose some players. Keep in mind, you're also going to gain some players. Like some players will come with Luke Fickle. From both from Cincinnati, um, from their their current roster, and from their um, recruiting class, so you're going to lose some, you're going to gain some. The dust will settle, and then we'll get back into a normal C, kind of a normal cycle. So, I would say ten to fifteen. That's a completely rough guess. Uh, Jim Tillerson says, "What will happen to Jim Leonard? He was four and three as a head coach, and other than Northwestern, they were not big wins. I think that went against him. Yeah, he, the finish definitely hurt him. Now, I, I, here's here's where I'm at. I tend to think." As long as Fickle was on the table, Leonard could have almost gone undefeated and it wouldn't have mattered, right? Now, if listen, if he had gone undefeated, it's Leonard's job. I, I think the optics would have been too hard to not take Fickle at that point. But Fickle is just such a good candidate. And he has proven, just because Leonard hasn't had a, that opportunity, he's proven so much that I almost don't think it mattered, the wins and losses. Like, as long as Fickle was on the table, that's who McIntosh was going to take. Now, the bigger question, what happens to Jim Leonard? Um, there's the, the way I see it, there's a couple options here, right? I think there's a very small chance he stays on staff as a defensive coordinator. I do not see that happening for a myriad of reasons. So if that doesn't happen, God, does he take a year off, right? Does, you know, in the off season, maybe does an, does an NFL team, the Packers potentially, um, come reaching back out as a defensive coordinator. Does he go to a, a head coaching position, maybe at, uh, like, a maybe, a Cincinnati level school, right? Somewhere in the American, somewhere in a non-power five conference. I don't know. It's it's a great question. He will have no shortage of opportunities, though. Um, I can promise that. And I, I am rooting like like absolute hell for him. I love Jim Leonard. I, I hope that there is nobody out there rooting for him to fail so it doesn't look bad on Wisconsin. I hope he goes out there and he absolutely crushes it. And he's an incredible coach wherever he lands. I have no doubt that he will be. So, yeah, that's a great question, though. Um, this is from a Cincinnati fan. Congrats on Fickle. He'll do great for you. Just don't get too attached because this is just a step to prep him for the OSU job. Again, just cycling it back to what I said. I don't care. Like, I don't care if he's – I shouldn't say I don't care at all. Like, it, it would be better, obviously, if he does great and he stays for 20 years, right? Like, absolutely. But – Ohio State's Ohio State. They're a bigger program than Wisconsin. He he played there. Like, I get it. If he leaves, I get it. It's no different than, you know, Pittsburgh being a stepping stone uh, for Chris to come to Wisconsin, right? None of us had a problem with that. It's no different than us saying we're just going to go rip Sean Lewis from Kent State. None of us have a problem with that. Stepping stones occur. Like, there's the, every almost every job could be a potential stepping stone to something better, right? So, if, if it becomes a stepping stone thing, and I'll say it again, that means that he's elevated Wisconsin, that he's crushed it while he's here, that he's rebuilt our culture. And then when he leaves to Ohio State, because he's only they're only taking him if he does well here, then our job is even more marketable and we'll go out and get another good coach. So that's where I'm at with that. Um, Lee Harshell, Herschel, we will now get a seasoned professional recruiting staff. Yeah, that's what I was saying in segment two. You're going to get a staff here now that like gives a crap about recruiting and not – not that Paul Chris didn't, but he also for a period of time kind of didn't, right? Like we saw that tangibly. We saw a recruiting department lay vacant for a year, eight months, I think. That's that's not acceptable in this era of college football. So, yeah, I think you're going to see a, a greater emphasis on it. I'll say that. Uh, Badger from Bournemouth, um, thank you for all the comments, by the way. Another great thing, Fickle wouldn't have come without assurances that Wisconsin is going to spend money and be a great football program. Yep, something else I touched on as well. I think this is very well said. 
he's coming here because he thinks he can win at a high level here. There's He's not coming here because he has to. He doesn't have to leave Cincinnati. This is a move of opportunity for him, not a move of necessity. So I'm excited for it. Uh, Rebel says a 3-3-5 won't work in the Big Ten. LMAO. Yeah, certainly Rich Rod came into Michigan and tried to play 3-3-5 when he came from West Virginia. But here's the thing. He's not playing a 3 so the three three five thing, he plays some of it. He also plays a three four. He's not an idiot. Like if he's getting gashed on the run, he's not running a three three five. I'm not worried about this at all. I think the fact that he's shown a a three three five, a three four, a, he has variety defensively. He's flexible, he's versatile. I'm not worried about this at all. He's not a he's not an exclusive three three five guy. Is what I'm saying. You know, so he's gonna be fine. He'll be okay. <laughs> Trust me. He'll you'll be okay. He'll put another linebacker on the field when we play Iowa. Um, Coriel, let's see, what is this? Coriel Johnson says, it's the spread. Wisconsin, as you've known it for 20 plus years, is gone. This move will set you back years. Nebraska went the spread route and has never recovered. Okay. So this is the last one. I'm going to finish on this one. This almost could have been another rant for me. Understand something. Wisconsin never are Wisconsin is not Nebraska. Stop that for now, for starters. Okay. Nebraska didn't recover because they made a series of terrible coaching hires. Right. Um, Callahan. Uh, Riley, Scott Frost. Listen, that is not Wisconsin. Okay. If Wisconsin makes three more or two more successively bad, let's say this hire doesn't work. Let's say, and it could, right? There's no guarantees. There's, there's not a, an ironclad money back guarantee that Luke Fickle is going to turn Wisconsin into a better program. I think he will. It's not a guarantee, but let's say this hire doesn't work. Wisconsin only turns into Nebraska. if They spend the next two decades still sucking. Right. If they spend the next two decades making con consecutively bad coaching hires, we got a long way before that happens. OK, so I'm not we can throw the ball at Wisconsin and not become Nebraska. This idea that the only way Wisconsin can continue to be in a, an above average program is by running the offense that they've run for the last 25 years is so nonsense. And it lacks any basis in reality. The idea that the spread is why Nebraska got bad is borderline absurd. You're bad because you kept hiring bad head coaches, not because you tried to change your offense. If you had hired a coach, a good coach that ran the spread, you would have been fine. So, um, yeah, I think that's a silly comment. I've always thought that was silly. Wisconsin is not going to become Nebraska because we change up our offensive style. So with that, I uh, appreciate everybody tuning in as always. This has been a fun one. We got a bunch more content coming up this week. We got Rajiv tomorrow. Uh, John Garcia Jr. is going to be stopping by on Wednesday. We're going to talk about big picture recruiting, who might um, be coming with Luke Fickle. What does John Garcia Jr. think of uh, their coaching staff? We got basketball coming up this week. Good matchup. So, yeah, just keep tuning in to Lockdown Badgers. Appreciate you all so much um, on Wisconsin, and let's keep going.